this morning. But probably what is not clear for everybody is how these standards are made. So I, the next 20 minutes, I will try to, to go through for you to understand how the process works and also to try to target what is uh, the international, what are the international standards on rabies. Of course, the OIE is known for the mandate to create international standard for disease control, for animal movement, and also we provide the guidelines for, for surveillance. When it comes to terrestrial animals, you can get two different set of uh, international standard. The terrestrial code, which of course is uh, available online, by the way, today the website of the OI is down, so I know my colleagues in headquarters are working to restore the, the website, so I will not invite you to visit today, or probably now, but we'll do in the, in the next uh, couple of hours, the system should work. So we got terrestrial code, which is standard for disease control and safe international standards, I say international trade, sorry, and the terrestrial manual, which is set the standard for laboratory diagnostic methods and also the requirements for the production and control of vaccines. It goes without saying that not all the tests are valid and not all the vaccines are valid. So there is international standard that we are recommended for countries to use in disease control program. But how the system works, how we set the standards? The standards are not done by OI staff that one, one day we sit down together and we draft the standard. There is a full process of consultation with international experts and we are trying to respond to countries' needs. So in these uh, few slides, I will try to cover how the system works. So the first thing, the process is triggered by OI delegates, by member countries, but also by international organizations such as WHO, or also by OI collaborating center or laboratory center that they recommend that we need to draft international standard. So this request goes to the code commission and the specialist commission, which is the scientific commission. They are specialized, they are international experts that are being selected by, by member countries to create the standards. They assess the request and sometimes they need to also receive the, the <laughs> advice by the ad hoc groups, which are global experts that they sit together for three days in OI headquarters to deliver very specific topics. They are the person responsible to prepare the first draft. This draft go back to the specialist commission and when it's uh, ready, we circulate for comment to all member countries. So the next general session will be at the end of May. So at the moment, your country got a set of documents that we are expecting your comments before the adoption. So it's again the, the delegate responsibility to circulate these, uh, these draft chapters among the experts in the country to receive the, the, their advice. Their comments are go back to the specialist commission, they assess, they incorporate, they modify, and sometimes they need to reconvene an ad hoc group <laughs> to address these uh, member countries' comments. The process takes at least two years and because they, we need to consult at least twice the member countries. That means we all have opportunity at least twice to provide our comments and to contribute to the standard setting process. When the specialist commission considers the chapter is ready for adoption, will be presented to the World Assembly of Delegates. Again, at the end of, of May, we are now in the process of preparation of this, uh, of this uh, uh, general uh, session and the standard will be presented for voting to the delegate. So there will be a discussion during the session, and if the member countries agree, and the standard that will be included in the next edition of the terrestrial code or terrestrial manual and become international standard. As I said, it usually takes at least two years. But the process mentioned there is a lot of consultation and it's all based on science, in the latest science available. Every time we convey a group, there is a well-detailed report explaining the scientific rationale of the modification in the standard. There are the ad hoc group's report. You can go online and check exactly what are the deliberation, what are the discussion, and why some proposal was included or was excluded to the text. The scientific commission, but also the code commission, meet at least twice a year, and they provide comments and 
justification respond to member countries' comments. Sometimes we receive that uh, the member countries agree or disagree with specific topics, and then it's up to the Scientific Commission and Code Commission to explain why this proposal was not included. And that explanation is very well detailed, so I encourage all of you to get into the website and read this the report. So when it's coming to rabies, I would like to divide in the two set of uh, standard terrestrial code and terrestrial manual. The terrestrial code, we need to look at the chapter 8.14 that we just discussed this morning. I must say that, as uh, Leah just mentioned, this chapter is currently under revision. So it was circulated for first time to member countries in February. So now the chapter is in your delegate or your CBO hands, and we are expecting comments before July 2018. So you got like a few months to circulate this chapter among your expertise or your expert in your country and to provide scientific explanation or comment to, to the UI. I also like to, to mention that there is a specific chapter in section 7, which is chapter 7.7, .7, which is related to a stray dogs population control that I will touch a little bit later. But they are, I guess, the two backbone when it comes to rabies standard. When we look at the diagnostic and vaccines, of course, chapter 2, 117, which is very much related to rabies diagnostic. This chapter has been extensively amended so we've been two years uh, been working on this chapter, and it will be presented for adoption during the, this general session. So we'll see, but it's very likely that we might have a new, brand new international standard after May 2018. And I also like to mention chapter 1.1.10, which is related to vaccine bank. Of course, it's not related only to vaccine bank related to rabies, but it's how the vaccine bank should set, which I brought it because it's quite important we have already discussed the morning, this morning the importance of using high quality vaccines, but also to ensure that this vaccine is always available. So vaccine bank is always a good solution, but not all the vaccine bank works. So there is international <laughs> standard for those countries or those regions that they want to prepare a vaccine bank. So you can uh, have a look at this chapter, which uh, clearly explains how this process should, should, should go. The idea for this modification, very much in line with the global strategy, which we will talk about that tomorrow, but we are making a big effort at international level, working closely with FAO and WHO to try to harmonize our international standard guidelines. We knew, we know in the past there was not such a big harmonization, but I think we now we can say very proudly that the international standard we are speaking with one voice. We've been working hard to try to, to ensure and to agree in what should be the advice to our member countries. And I think we are very close to have a very nice final product. So allow me to go back a little bit more in details of chapter 8.14, which is infection with rabies virus. And as you can see there, there is a, quite a few new additions. All these additions are direct requests by member countries, and also try to incorporate the latest scientific evidence. So. As already mentioned, the chapter is for first first round of comments. We have this ad hoc group back in November. There was again quite a few of our colleagues in the audience today that they participate in this in that ad hoc group. And one of the major modifications that we are going to incorporate is the definition of dogs mediated rabies. Until now, that was just rabies. A case of rabies was a case of rabies, regardless the, the species. Now we got specific definition of dogs mediated rabies that will support countries in this achieving this goal of human elimination, human rabies elimination. We, the expert, also proposed at creating a zone. As it is at the moment, a country can only declare the entire territory free of rabies. With the new chapter. What is, has been proposed is that the country can also declare a specific area free of rabies. That will help the country to progressively control rabies in the whole territory. Of course, when it comes to, to rabies, this is a concept that has been very well adapted or uh, adopted by our member countries to control major diseases such as food and mouth or avian influenza or, or PPR. The concept on, with rabies is a little bit more complicated because we all know rabies goes with dogs and dogs <laughs> goes with people. So to control movement, you need to control the movement of people. And this is a little bit more tricky, but there is certain part of the world, 
especially in Asia, where there is countries with many islands and they are actually benefiting of this zoning approach. So it was a, a interesting discussion and we all agree that could be beneficial for not only for that countries but many countries that can benefit of this uh, zoning approach. When it's come to freedom, we discussed this morning with our colleague from Croatia and, and Serbia, a country can self-declare free of rabies at the moment. But with the new modification, in the future we'll be able to self-declare free of dogs mediated rabies. Again, very much linked to the global strategy to, to achieve zero human death by 2030. So that would be a new addition that will be very much discussed during the, the next uh, round of comments. The chapter will provide a recommendation for animal movement, what you need to do to move one dogs or cows from one infected area or, or country or zone to another, to a free country or zone. That will remain very much like it is at the moment. And a new addition would be the recognition of the endorsement of the national control program. And I would like to stop here for a little second because that's very much linked to what Leah has said about the validation. What we want to achieve is that rabies will not be any longer a public health problem. And to do that, you need to have a very strong disease control system in your, in your, in your country, which will guarantee that there is enough post-exposure prophylaxis to humans, but need to be very strongly supported by a, a very solid animal uh, rabies uh, control program in animals. So the proposal would be for the OIE to endorse this control program, so the countries will be able to submit a dossier to the UAE. This dossier will be evaluated by independent expert. And then the UAE will say, OK, that's, that sounds that you got a very nice program. And if you do what you meant to do, you will achieve the goal of elimination by the target the country decide. So this is that would be a, a new addition, which uh, we are all very excited about it, because I think we can, it can make a big difference in the country and also to increase this political willingness that we are always struggling to have this political commitment. Um, the new addition would be on surveillance. At the moment, there was not specific guidelines for rabies surveillance. The new chapter will have a specific article on surveillance, just tailored to, to rabies. So as you have seen, there was a very extensive work in the rabies chapter, which uh, we all believe it will really contribute to, to facilitate disease control. But I want to emphasize that this is your responsibility to provide sound comments on the chapter. That was the chapter proposed by six well-recognized international experts, which has been selected, were selected by the director general of the OIE and tried to represent the reality in the world. So people from different parts of the world, but there were only six people that they got and a particular opinion. Now it's up to the member countries, which will be the, the end users of this chapter, to provide the comments and provide recommendation to ensure that this chapter actually is fit for the purpose, which is actually facilitating and supporting rabies disease control. Allow me to move to chapter 7.7, .7, which is about stray dogs population control. It's not specific for rabies. It's within the section of uh, welfare, so it's very much linked to the welfare of, of dogs. But of course, as you, you will see in the in the introduction of the chapter, stray dogs population control should be considered an integral part of rabies elimination program. <coughs> the aim of this chapter will be to control in dogs population without causing any suffering to the animals. We also recognize that the veterinary services in the country, they play an important role in controlling stray dogs population. So that could be setting the, the base of the chapter. It's a long chapter, which I invite all of you to have a good read, but there are several sections which will be the objective of the chapter, who is responsible of doing what, what are the measures of control that we need to implement in the country, how to monitor and evaluate our system, our program, and also there is an article which is all about estimation the, 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 the site of the population. That is the chapter, being, it was adopted uh, a few years ago, and now there is a lot of discussion if this chapter needs to be modified. We are working closely with the international organization or animal protection. We will have a discussion a, a, a few weeks ago to see how we can improve this chapter to make more usable and more applicable to the reality 
in the world. So the chapter is uh, in the process of being open for discussion or for, for modification. Now we move to international standard on diagnostic and vaccines. The chapter was open for revision two years ago and is almost ready to be presented for adoption. The expert proposed a completely new revision. It was completely a uh, modification. They update all the reference and also they include a couple of diagnostic techniques that they were very much requested by, by, by the expert in the countries, which could be the DERIT and also the PCR. So if member countries agree in four weeks time, these two tests will be recommended by the UI. Until now, PCR was not recommended, but now I think we got enough scientific evidence. The OI Reference Lab compiled a very solid report to demonstrate that these tests should be also recommended. A good, a big modification was when it came to oral vaccination. I realized this morning there was a few countries that they were using oral vaccination in dogs. Again, we took that, uh, that approach in consideration and the chapter will have standard for oral vaccination in dogs. Until now, oral vaccination was very much recommended to wildlife. It was not so much focusing dogs vaccination, but I think there is enough evidence that we demonstrated that can, oral vaccination can also be very useful to complement parental vaccination to increase the vaccination coverage in an endemic setting. So my last slide, some conclusion that uh, you realize the international standard, I just click key for the global harmonization of disease control strategy. The international standards are based on science. They are scientific based and they are always open for new revision if new scientific evidence arrive. The standard setting process is very inclusive. We all play a role and the voting of the adoption follow a democratic process. So the, every time a new chapter is to be adopted, the president of the OIE proposed this chapter for adoption, and member countries vote, just raise the hands and say, we agree or disagree, or we agree, but they suggest some modification. So this is the way we adopt the international standard. This standard should be the base for the legal framework. So your national regulation should mirror what the international standard are saying, because this is the system to do a risk assessment by, by the experts. And of course, if member countries' responsibility to take care of the integrity of the terrestrial code when it comes to science. So member countries should provide scientific comments to justify the modification in the chapter. And with that, I think I thank you for your attention.